Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. As you can see behind me, it is the first and probably only day that we're gonna be able to come out here and ice skate on the pond. Before we do that, we've gotta clear all the snow off. I mean, realistically, I think we've only had probably at any given time, two to three inches at most on the ground this winter. It's been a pretty mild winter. And for us snow lovers, that's pretty depressing. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of snow on the, the uh, ice right now, but we need to get it cleared off so we can ice skate. Tomorrow it's gonna get up to in the 40s, and then after that I think like 48 later this week. So really today and tomorrow are what looks like in the extended forecast, the only days we're gonna be able to get out here on the ice and ice skate. So gotta get this cleared off and start enjoying it while we can. Now to clear the ice last year, we bought this PowerCare 24 inch gas snowblower off of Craigslist. I think I got it for 400 bucks used. And uh, it does a good job. And PowerSmart actually reached out to us and asked if we wanted to try out a battery powered 24 inch snowblower. It runs off of an 80 volt battery. This thing is a pretty substantial battery. The nice thing about this over the gas powered is if you're loading it in the bed of a side by side or a pickup truck or anything, if you're going to do you know neighborhoods or something like that with it, you can take this out, make this a lot lighter. And even with the battery in it, it is still significantly lighter than the gas powered model. Now with two people, it doesn't really matter. Or if you're just parking it in your garage and using it for your own personal driveway, but the battery goes in just like this. And there you go. And it does have a battery level indicator. So if you push that button, there it goes. Yeah, so right now we are fully charged. And uh, what I wanna do is run these two side by side and see how far each of them casts the snow. I have not used this beside this one yet to see power difference and whatnot, and I also have not completely drained a battery yet to see how long it will run. So that's why we brought it out here to the pond, because this is like one giant parking lot. I kind of want to torture test it and see how much snow we can clear or how much area we can clear with one full charge on a battery. thing I noticed right off the bat this one throws snow farther granted this stuff is light powdery snow we've only got an inch it might be different if uh, you know we had a foot of snow the gas powered one maybe would have more torque to throw wet heavy snow but in this specific application here this one is throwing the snow further another thing I'll mention this one is way lighter like we talked about easier to get in and out of the side by side but uh, just moving it around it's way easier to push around the wheels spin freely. It's almost like this one is always in gear. When you go to push it around, it's a lot heavier. And 
see the wheels aren't spinning there. They're spinning backwards, but they, they almost lock up. So when you're not running the machine, moving it back and forth, this one is a lot more difficult to maneuver and move around. So you might be wondering if the reason that one's easier to push is because it's just a manual push. It's not self-propelled. That one is self-propelled. It has seven speeds on it. I think this one has six speeds on it. So they both have gear driven uh, wheels. That one just disengages when you're not using it. Um, the one thing that I will say that is slightly annoying about this unit is when you come over here to start it, you push this little button and you've got about five seconds to start the blower and if you don't that light goes out so if you get down to the end of a run and you stop turn it around and whatever you'll have to push that button again to re-engage it so i find myself i'll go to push the uh, auger button down and nothing will happen and it's because the switch has disengaged and you've got to re-engage it and basically restart the blower up uh, every time you let off the handle i wish I wish that would stay on for like 20 or 30 seconds instead of five seconds. So I got neighbor Doug over here giving me a hand today. And uh, what I wanna do is I wanna put it at the camera in slow motion and run both of these and see if we can see a difference in the uh, main auger speed. And then maybe we'll be able to see um, a difference in the impeller speed as well. Like I said, these are both two-stage snowblowers. You can see a difference in the size of the augers. The gas one does have a little bit bigger auger on it. So, you know, maybe if you're in real frozen, icy situations, that might be helpful to have the bigger auger. But uh, let's go ahead and put it in slow motion and try this out. So you can definitely see here that the main auger spins faster on the 80 volt battery powered snowblower. Kind of hard to tell whether the impeller is spinning faster or not, but I think from our test and the fact that it was throwing the snow farther, it's safe to assume that it does spin faster than the gas model. All right, before we get too crazy and get too far out into the middle of the pond where it's a little deeper, I want to go ahead and check the thickness of the ice. We are about, I don't know, three and a quarter, three and a half, three and a half, I'd say. And I think that's plenty safe enough to uh, be out here with one, our own body weight and two, the snowblower. All right, so now that we got a lot of the comparisons done between the performance of the two machines, I'm gonna go ahead and just run the battery powered one to see how much area we can clear before the battery dies. And then maybe once we get to the other side of the pond and we've blown all of this snow all the way over there, we'll have a little thicker snow. Uh, maybe we'll retry it again uh, in some deeper snow and see if there's a difference in the performance between the two machines uh, in some deeper snow. So let's go ahead and drain this battery. So we just ran out of battery. This is a pretty good size section that it cleared. Again, we're only dealing with, you know, an inch or two of real light powdery stuff. But just to give you an idea, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Each one of my strides is about three feet, so that's 36 feet wide. And off camera here, I'll get you a quick measurement of how long this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 50, 51. All right, so that was about 50 paces times three feet. So we were able to clear, uh, what, 150 by 36 feet wide with one battery. I think that's pretty good. I think that would do most residential driveways and probably your neighbors too. So I know we're gonna get people who are gonna say, I can't believe you're doing a snowblower test in one inch of snow. And uh, like I said, I just don't know how much more snow we're going to get this winter. So this seemed like maybe one of the last opportunities we'd get. But uh, in order to give a, a little bit more of a real world test, I got Doug here pushing the snow shovel and we're creating a snow bank so we can simulate what eight or 10 inches of snow would look like. And then we'll go ahead and try the uh, battery powered snow blower again on that. I don't know about you guys, but this is a heck of a lot easier than pumping more gas into a an internal combustion engine. So now we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and see if we can take care of this snow bank we mounted up here. All right, guys, so we got enough of the ice cleared here to ice skate this evening and tomorrow. I got my family coming into town. I've got four nephews, plus my son is getting to the ripe old age that we could probably start thinking about getting him on ice skates. But uh, I wanted to show you the control features of this and how it's different than the gas-powered model that I have because it is pretty convenient. Um, so on this side, you have your chute left and right. That's really nice. And then you also have your chute up and down. So if the wind is really blowing, you can point it straight at the ground so it's not getting picked up by the wind. Or if you've got the wind blowing in your favor, you can shoot it up in the air and really throw that snow 50, 75 feet, something like that. Um, how that's different from the gas model that I have, this has the standard old school crank. You turn this and it turns the chute left and right. And then you have to manually come over here, loosen this wing nut, and shoot this up and down. And uh, it's just, it's a little less convenient, you know? Um, the other nice thing is this is your auger control here. This is your drive control for your drive wheels, but it also has a secondary drive control here. So you can actually do the, the auger and the drive with one hand and use your right hand to adjust the chute while you're moving without having to stop and readjust like you would with the gas model. So now let's get down to brass tacks. All of the creature comforts that are on this new battery powered 80 volt snowblower mean nothing if it doesn't perform. You guys saw it definitely throws the snow. We were throwing it, you know, 50 feet, like I said, nice, light, fluffy stuff. Where I think this one will excel is on smaller city lots, smaller driveways, and in climates that you don't get a ton of snow. If you regularly get a foot of snow, 
I don't know if this one is going to have the juice that you're going to need. I think that's when you'd want to step up to a gas snowblower. I think this one definitely operates at a higher speed, but less torque. So that's when you get into that wet, heavy snow, the gas one is going to be better. It's got more torque, but it's not going to throw the snow as far as this one will. One other thing I noticed is the self-propelled on this one does not seem as strong as the gas motor one does. And I don't know if it's because if the auger starts to get bogged down, it steals power from the self-propelled wheels. But I did find myself pushing this model a little bit more than I do with the gas model. Uh, so that's one thing I think could probably be improved upon is making the motor in the self-propelled drive wheels a little bit stronger. Now let's talk about what I do like about it. I mentioned before it is super lightweight. It is way more maneuverable. Um, the batteries last sufficiently long enough to clear at least one normal size residential driveway. Or if you live in the city, this thing would be plenty to take care of your city sidewalks. Now, obviously the biggest benefit to the battery powered unit over the gas powered is the maintenance. This thing is gonna require almost zero maintenance. You don't have oil changes. You don't have to worry about shutting off the fuel or draining your carburetor at the end of the season or your carburetor gumming up. I mean, let's be honest, most snow blowers only get used a handful of times a year and then they sit in the garage with uh, gasoline going bad in them. And you don't have to worry about any of that. Just put a full charge on the battery and tuck it away in a drawer for you know 11 months until you're ready to use it again next season. One final benefit to the battery powered snowblower is noise. Would you rather listen to this? Or this? Anyways guys, I think that's gonna about wrap this one up. Let me know if you have ever operated a battery powered snowblower before and what you think of it compared to a gas powered snowblower. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.